So this title is not clickbait. I honestly believe this is one of the greatest Italian red wines that nobody knows about. Okay, maybe not nobody, but very few people outside the professional wine writing circle. And that wine is Montefalco Rosso. Montefalco is a village in the heart of Umbria, which actually sits at the heart of Italy. It's the only region in Italy that's not bordered by either the sea or another country, right below Tuscany. It's the greenest region in Italy, real pastoral. It's a lovely place. Over the last two years, I've been going to the Antiprimas every year in the spring. I've had an amazing time. There's amazing food, amazing wines to be had, including Montefalco Rosso's. These offer absurd value for money. In Umbria, in Italy, you can get these on the shelf for nine to 15 euros. A lot of times in the restaurant, under 15 euros. Of course, in America, because of all the costs, they're gonna be a little bit more. I don't think any of these wines here are topping 30 bucks. Montefalco is known for Sagrantino you know, a big tannic high alcohol red wine. It needs a lot of bottle aging to really show its best. Montefalco Rosso isn't necessarily a second wine. Like in Brunello di Montalcino, you have Rosso di Montalcino. Up in Barolo, you have Langa Nebbiolo or Nebbiola di Alba. No, Montefalco Rosso is a different wine all by itself because 60 to 80% of the blend must be Sangiovese, a grape that you know I absolutely love. Sagrantino can make up 10 to 25% of the blend and this is key here. In general, I see producers use around the 70% mark, although it can vary. The Sagrantino really is what adds a little bit of character. And because it's a high alcoholic grape, these wines on the label can look like they're huge wines, 14.5, 15% alcohol. But that's only because the Sagrantino adds that. The Sangiovese is so juicy, has so much bright acidity. The wines are very drinkable. They go great with all types of foods. In this category, you also have the Montefalco Rosso Reserva. Those wines are the same blend. They're just better grapes. They have to be released at least 30 months before release and 12 of those months must be in oak. You have to look a little bit harder to find some of these wines in the U.S. because they're drank mostly in Italy. They're fantastic bistro wines, but I think they offer complexity well beyond the price point. Today here I have 12. And stay tuned because in an upcoming video I'm going to blind taste six Montefalco Rosso Reservas. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's get blind tasted. Alrighty, tasting out my Gabriel Glass Standard Edition. Love this glass. I think it's gonna work great with all these wines, Sangiovese based wines. I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. In a lot of videos, I blind taste everything and I reveal at the end in order. I'm gonna blind taste these and then reveal them after I taste each one. I think with 12 wines, it's gonna be easier to follow. Just think it's gonna be a little fun. I wanna change things up a little bit. I'm actually stoked to do this video. Producers were great. They were really enthusiastic. I got so many samples that I thought, man, I have to split this up into Montefalco Rosso and Montefalco Rosa Reserva video. Let's get going here. Wine one, automatically out of the gate, everything I want. Tons of sour cherry, tons of white pepper, tons of earth. I just, I'm a sucker for red fruit flavor. Bright, simple, straightforward. This is bright, juicy. This is one of these Montefalco Rosos that are just fun wines. So much fruit, so much fun to drink. Not the most tannic, not the most length, not the most structure, but it's the type of wine I wanna sit down even on a hot summer day because the acidity, the brightness, just it's just really enjoyable to drink. Let's take a look. I'm 89 points on wine one. I think it's outstanding. If it's affordable, I say you buy this by the case. Let's take a look, see, shall we? What do we got here? <laughs> we got the Benedetti Igrigi Atunis Montefalco Rosso. This runs around 25 bucks in the US. It's a little bit harder to find. They're a fairly new producer. I know in Italy it's under 13 euros, I think. 20% Sagrantino, 10% Merlot. I find that I really like Montefalco Rosso's with a lot of Merlot. It just adds a little bit of plushness. The Sangiovese really comes out. 70% Sangiovese, I thought it might be up to 80%. Nice wine. In theory, I have some favorites here that I that I like non-blind. I wanna see how they show up blind. That's actually the same score I gave it when I was at the Antiprima a couple months ago, so that's cool. It's so different blind tasting this way. When I do the blind tasting and then I reveal everything at the you're kind of comparing the wines against each other. That helps you develop a score to come across. This, it's kind of snap judgment. You have to recall all the wines that you've ever tasted and you judge quality that way. So it's a different way of blind tasting. Not all blind tasting is created the same. Of course, I knew what the wines were. I just Coravin them and then had somebody mix them up. But anyways, let's move on to wine two. Wine two is earthier. Wine one was more bright fruit. Has some kind of mushroom notes. It's a little bit deeper. Yeah. Still has the sour cherry that I'm absolutely craving and loving. 
This is lovely, whatever two is. Has a tad more complexity, has a tad more tannin. I wonder how much Sagrantino is in this because I have a little more tannins. Number one, I could confuse with 100% Sangiovese. This, I definitely, it has that spiciness of Montefalco Rosso that I really think is wonderful. I'm gonna give it 90 plus points. I think it's very good. I'm excited to see what it is. Let's see what the price is, shall we? We have the Bacali Montefalco Rosso 2018, tiny producer. Valentini is a lovely guy, 24 bucks. This is available in the USA. This has 15% Sagrantino, 10% Merlot, 5% Colorino, in addition to the 70% Sangiovese, 24 bucks, 90 plus. I think this is a lovely wine. Again, this says 15% alcohol, does not feel that big at all. I don't feel any heat. I'm surprised that this has less Sagrantino than the other wine because it tasted more Sagrantino-y. Another thing that's cool about these wines is they can age pretty darn well. I've had some really nice examples up to 10, 15 years old. They're excellent. Wine 3 has a little bit of that volatile acidity, a little bit kind of that vinegar note. It's not too overpowering. Some people really don't like VA volatile acidity. This has the right amount. I think it accentuates the fruit, especially in central Italian wine. Red fruit. Going on some black cherry though, VA has a little bit of white pepper. It just looks a little darker. It has kind of some more sang Sagrantino-esque qualities. Oh, when you taste a lot of wines together, it's so cool, the diversity. The length on here is exceptional. It's a super long wine. I prefer wine too with more of the red fruit flavors. However, this is structured, this is long. So I'm gonna give it this game score. I'm gonna say 90 plus points. Again, it's not all about scores. Think about, you know, what I just talked about in terms of the wine's palette, the flavor. I think I'd prefer to drink two, but a lot of people I know would drink three because they like more darker fruit. They like that length, that structure. It has some aggressive tannins. Gonna go great with any kind of meatballs, tomato sauce. Let's check out what number three is, shall we? Number three. This is the Leonardo Capri Montefalco Rosso 2021. 15% Sagrantino, 15% Merlot, 70% Sangiovese. Brought in by Wilson Daniels. One of the more affordable wines here. This is 19 bucks. Leonardo Capri is one of the producers that really put Montefalco, especially Sagrantino, on the map. Michel Roland from France, from Pomerol, is the consultant there. Beautiful estate. I'm really impressed with the quality of wines they pump out at that type of quantity. Don't quote me, but I think they're at about a million and a half bottles per year. This was actually the first Montefalco Rosso that I've ever had. They make three. In fact, this is the entry level one. I gave it 90 plus blind. I think it's fantastic. I know when you're there in Italy, you can get on the shelf, I think for nine euros, which is crazy stupid for this quality of wine. Good stuff. Let's move on to wine number four. Four is a little bit shy. It's not like, it's not showing me everything just yet. Mm. This, it's a red fruit cedar type note. The cedar really comes out a little bit more, the tobacco, but still red fruit, which I'm liking. It's just a little shy. I want it to be a little bit more explosive. I love the red fruit. I love the cedar in this wine. It isn't as long as the, the previous wine, but like wine one, it's just fun. It's really enjoyable to drink. I think if it's affordable, you're gonna really like it. Number one was more based on fruit. Number four here is based more on cedar tobacco, although there are the red fruit flavors. I'm gonna give it 89 points as well. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's see how expensive this is. So I thought this is the Tenuta Alzatora Montefalco Rosso 2020. This is 15% Merlot, 15% Sagrantino, 70% Sangiovese. Runs in at 19 bucks. This is a property of the big Checky group. Checky produces a lot of wines, mostly in central Italy. Sometimes people think the wines can be kind of commercial. I think Alzatora is one of their best estates because the wines have character. I think this is beautiful. It's 19 bucks in the US. Over there in Italy, I've seen it for as little as nine Nine bucks. It's the exact type of wine I want to drink, and it has character. Big production, but really, really show that sense of place us wine geeks love, and it's just, it's delicious wine. <laughs> okay, let's move on here to wine number five. Mm. Five is integrated. Tobacco, cedar, red fruit, it's just nice. Mm. It has just gorgeous qualities to it. Red fruit, tobacco, cedar, earth. This is what Montefalco Rosso is all about to me. It has the Sangiovese characteristics. It's familiar, yet it's unique enough. That's complex, it's rich, it's layered, just super enjoyable to wine to drink. For me so far, it's the favorite wine I've had. I have it at, I wanted to go really, really crazy. Let's be quasi conservative because I'm trying to be a little bit more critical with my scores. 91 plus points. I think it's very good. Tannic too, it's got some structure. Let's see what we got here. 
This is the Scotts of Diaboli Montefel Caroso 2020. This is 15% Sagrantino, 25% uh, Merlot, so only 60% Sangiovese. 21 bucks, readily available. Another wine that in Italy you're gonna find for nine to 10 bucks. In the US, 21 bucks. This is the power of blind tasting. When I had this not blind a little while ago, I thought it was too big, too beefy, too plush, and not Montefalco Rosso enough yet. Excellent. 91 plus points for a wine that's $21. Uh, I'm gonna say go seek that out. I really like their Sagrantino as well because I think it's one of the more approachable versions of Sagrantino. Scotts di Avoli, you know, really good call. <laughs> I think also a cool fact, the Scotts di Avoli is named after an exorcism that went on around the property. I don't know the full story, but it's a little bit creepy. So that's something you remember too. Okay, let's move on. Wine six has a little bit of bacon fat, red fruit flavors. A little bit of black pepper. Another reason I like Montefalco Rosso is you don't have the same formula. You can lose, use some local grapes. I think I've seen Syrah used in some before. Don't quote me on that. You know, that's the thing about wine. There's so much stuff to know. You make mistakes sometimes from time to time. But producers in general, I notice really enjoy making and drinking Montefalco Rosso's. Bacon fat gets me here along with the red fruit flavors. It's got complexity, it's got density, it's got a touch of tannins, the tannins, the things that make your mouth a little bit astringent. Definitely gonna be great with any tomato sauce based dishes, 91 points. I think this is outstanding wine. Let's take a look at here. Well, we got another one from Leonardo Capri. Vigna Flaminia Meramana, Montefalco Rosso 2019. This is a single vineyard wine. 85% uh, Sangiovese, 15% Sagrantino, $28. I think this is one of the more expensive wines in the flight, showed super well. Definitely better than the Montefalco Rosso for me. A little bit more complex, they have that bacon fat than their regular Montefalco Rosso, but again, the Montefalco Rosso normal is 19 bucks, so if you can find either one, I think it's worth checking out. Tell me in the comments below if you like me blind tasting these and then revealing one by one or if you like me blind tasting through everything and then revealing at the end. I'd love to hear the comments what actually people say and I can actually read the data too. So I wanna see if there are any discrepancies or it's true with what I'm seeing with the data. Let's move on to number seven here. <sighs> seven smells central Italian to me. Red cherry, sour cherry, pepper, a little bit of that a mushroom, cedar. Again, I think it reminds me of wine number five, the Scotsa Diavoli. It's just really balanced. Everything kind of comes together here. Nothing stands out. On the palate, real sweet red fruit flavors. It's a dry wine, but the, the fruit is so bright and intense. as the spine of acidity. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Here's the thing, this is gonna tickle the fancy of wine geeks like me because of the complexity. I think wines like one, and four people might like a little bit more because they're more red fruit, easier to drink. I like this a heck of a lot. This is a subjective thing, it's the acidity. The bright acidity really moves me. I mean, that's why I love Riesling. Let's take a look, I think this is good. 92 points. <sighs> I like this wine, not blind. I thought it was one of the best Montefalco Rosas, not blind and blind. Look what it is. This is the Antonelli Montefalco Rosa 2020. In some vintages, they changed 70% Sangiovese, I think 15% Sagrantino, 15% Merlot, 21 bucks. Antonelli, one of the great producers in Montefalco, and this showed really nice. Wow, some of my hunches here. I tasted a lot of these wines not blind months and months and months ago. I waited to shoot this video so I could kind of forget that, but I do remember what wines left an impression on me, where they stand, and everything so far is holding up. That's pretty cool. Maybe I shouldn't pat myself on the back yet because I still have some wines to taste. Wine number eight here. Eight has more wood than any of these wines so far. The Vigna Flaminia Maramana also had a bacon fat component. This is more just kind of wood. Doesn't really bother me. I'm just letting you know it sticks out a little bit more. A lot of people actually like wood. So us wine people always poo poo say wine should have less and less wood. But in general, people like oak. Red fruit flavors show through. Mm, when you shake it up, this has a strawberry component. This is the first wine that has this strawberry, even strawberry rhubarb component. Mm. I'm gonna make a bold statement here. Don't take this out of context, although some people might. It's not the same quality level, but to me, this has a lot of flavor profiles of high quality Northern Rhone Syrah. More red fruit, which is surprisingly, Northern Rhone can be a little bit more red fruity. Wood, the earth, the strawberry rhubarb component. I think this is very good. Let me get the score right. That kind of took me back a little bit. Very good. I'm gonna give it 91 points. Let's take a look here. 
<laughs> this is the Goretti La Mora Sarecene. This is the Montefalco Rosso 2020. 65% Sangiovese, 20% Merlot, 15% Sagrantino, 23 bucks. Goretti makes most of their wines, I think, around Perugia. They make Montefalco Rosso. They also make a Sagrantino. This is very good. This is better blind than I remember not blind. Power blind tasting, man. All of these wines would just crush any tomato-based pastas, any stewed meats. Nine! Feels like it's a little bit older than all these other wines. Not super old, but has that little bottle patina, the shine, the mushroom, the earth notes are coming out a little bit more. Red fruit, I think it's brilliant. It smells brilliant. Oh, it has like a little bit of a beef jerky component, but still, these are all nuances. All of these, what ties these wines together is the Sangiovese sour cherry fruit. Interesting wine and very good. Bright cherry, really complex nose. Like I said, it tastes a little bit older. On the back end, I get the ripe, ripe black cherry flavors. It kind of reminds me of Sagrantino-esque. It's a little bit riper, it's a bigger wine. I think it's outstanding though. I'm 92 plus on it. I think it's very good. Let's take a look here and see. I kind of had a, a, a feeling this, this is the Romanelli Capo de Casa Montefalco Rosso 2019. This is 65% Sangiovese, 15% Sagrantino, 10% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, 19 bucks in the US. Man, these wines bring a lot of, and some of these wines are super cheap in Italy. I think I've seen this around 14, 15 bucks in Italy, 19 in the US, more of a minimal intervention producer. This is Tannic Strong. I visited this producer two years ago. Uh, I didn't visit them this time, so I haven't had this wine in a couple years and I think it's outstanding. Very nice, very nice. These wines are coming to play, wine number 10. 10 is even more impressive than the wine nine here. 10 just has like it's got it all going on. Perfume, cedar, red fruit. Italian wines have the signature of the acid. This almost smells Frenchy, so to speak. Excellent wine, 93 points on this. I wanna see what the price is. It's hitting my palate perfectly. Let's take a look here. This is the Tenuta Bellafonte Pomentino Montefalco Rosso 2019. This is 80% Sangiovese, 20% Sagrantino, 27 bucks. 13% alcohol. I visited this producer this last time. I tasted the wines in the cellar and the cellar had the cellar smell, so it kind of affected how the wine smelled. I remember the mouthfeel, I thought it was impressive and this was damn impressive. 93 points, 27 bucks again. Man, all these wines are really bringing it, really bringing it. These wines really remind me of, uh, I used to play basketball pretty competitively. These wines, I guess, kind of remind me of, of a player <laughs> like me. I was a little bit undersized. I'm not long, I don't look very assuming. But in my, in my heyday, I could play. I could play a little bit. And yeah, these are just unheralded region, a little bit lesser known, not flashy names, but man, they're bringing a lot of heat, especially for the price. Let's move on to wine number 11 here. Wine 11 has the most mushroom, has kind of developed most of this age quality. And this is unusual because it's the most black fruit out of all the wines here. I'm really curious to see how much Sagrantino was in here. It's almost have like black stewed fruits, but then when you taste it, you get the brightness, that bright red fruit acidity of Sangiovese, that tangy acidity. I gear more towards red fruits, but I cannot deny the quality here. Somebody that's gonna light a little more darker fruit. I wonder if this has like an absurd amount of Sagrantino in it. 91 points on it. I think it's very good. Uh, dark fruit a little bit for me, for me to go absurd, absurd, but I think it's very good. This is the Montione Montefalco Rosso, 2019, 19 bucks. I gave it 91 points. Sangiovese Merlot, 15% Sagrantino. This producer really is passionate about Sagrantino. That's why I think you would see the expression in his wine. Surprising, because in the past, Unblind, I given that wine one of the highest scores of the Montefalco Rosso's. I still think it's an outstanding wine, just a little bit more darker. Coming up the rear at wine number 12 here. 12, nice, very, very nice. 12 has like the strong component along with the sour cherry notes. It's got a lot of pepper. It's got this nut. You can tell this is a central Italian wine. This wine's got character. This wine's balanced. It's all coming together. It's tart. It's got round tannins. 91 plus on it. I think it's very good. Let's see what it is. None of these wines are duds here. Let's take a look here. We have the Moretti Omero Montefalco Rosso 2019. This is 70% Sangiovese, 25% Sagrantino, 5% other red grapes. Runs about 30 bucks. I know they make great olive oil. They are an organic producer worth checking out. 
I think regardless of the type of red wine drink you are, you're gonna find a lot to like in Montefalco Rosso's. Everything from more dark fruit, like we have the Montioni. You have a lot of bright acidity like the Antonelli. You have some great wines like the Capo di Casa from Romanelli, the Tenuta Bellafonte. I think the Benedetti and Grigi and the El Satora are just really fun wines to drink, more simple wines, affordable wines. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried Montefalco Rosso before. Stay tuned because the next video we're gonna go through and we're gonna blind taste six Montefalco Rosso Reservas. Thanks a lot guys. I'll see you soon.